Rosie, thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. I'm going to tell you a story, and it's a story um, that really demonstrates that necessity is a mother of invention. And it's a story of how we conceived our annual architecture commission, the Serpentine Gallery Pavilion. Uh, the Princess of Wales was our patron, and of course when she died, that changed things significantly for all her charities, including us. At the same time, we lost not only our patron, but also our principal sponsor of events that actually were the most important fundraising occasions in the whole year, Vanity Fair. So it was, as they say, a double whammy and a very serious one for uh, an organization that relies on public funding. So we had to do something that, in a way, drew a line under the association of these two great, but in their very different ways, great, uh, great and significant people in our life, people, person and organization. And um, what we did was devise a game, a, a rule of the game, you could say. When um, Vanity Fair uh, worked with us on our annual fundraising event, which was known as the Sun Party, um, they are, as you know, one of the great party givers of the world. They, they organize the Oscar parties. Uh, and any party of note that you've probably read about or seen pictures of in the media worldwide. So they really know authentically how to, how to host a party. What we know about uh, and continue to know about is how to present culture to an international audience. The two are related but not entirely the same. So when Vanity Fair, who'd um, joined with us, uh, to raise huge sums of money for our renovation of the building. When they pulled out and the Princess of Wales died, we were looming, fast approaching our 30th anniversary, the 30th anniversary of a public gallery known for contemporary art in a royal park, as Rosie has suggested. So what we came up with was a rule of the game that really defined uh, the next 12 years of the Serpentine. And I'm glad to see that the slide or the image hasn't gone up. I don't want it yet. Nope. <laughs> Take it away. Um, we agreed to play this game and give ourselves the same budget as Vanity Fair spent on the marquee to commission an architect of great international acclaim, well, maybe not of great international acclaim, an architect anyway, to design a structure in which we would hold our 30th anniversary. Um, and we also felt that it was very important to, to firmly say there were going to be no tortured flowers, there were going to be no sense of design, the design was the architecture. And that somehow resonated and rep represented what the Serpentine Gallery stood for. And so um, we had on our board at the, t at the time, and still have on our board, Zaha Hadid, who, um, whenever it was written to her about her in the, around the, the late 90s, um, early 2000s, it was always the same strap line. Zaha Hadid has never completed a building. So we had two projects, two building projects that we were working on. One was this idea of what we were going to do to reinvent the our annual fundraiser, the Sun Party, uh, our gala dinner, and also our small bookshop, bookshop in, um, in Warren Street that we'd taken over on a temporary basis. So I asked Zaha, first of all, to come to the bookshop, and she arrived with this incredible entourage. There was Zaha, there was Patrick Schumacher, her co-director, there was Woody, who's still with her and working with her, there was um, Jim Heverin, and there was a chauffeur. Now, this was a tiny, tiny space, and I can assure you that was, once they were all in there, there was nothing left to do anything else with. So it was quite clear that that project was not for her. What was for her, and which she took up readily, thank the Lord, was to design the structure in which the, uh, our gala would take place, our summer party. Uh, we worked with somebody called Eric Gabriel, who was a project manager of Glyndebourne, and the reason this name is very important is because he was the person that I kind of nominated as our guide to ensure that we did things properly. We had a very tight budget, we had very little time, and he knew what he was doing. He also was somebody I admired hugely because he renovated Glyndebourne, they built this incredible new concert hall in a year and our renovation had taken 80 months, and every time I thought about it, I ground my teeth at how he could do it so quickly. Anyway, he did, and he agreed to help us. 
And there began a series of conversations that I've had with many other people, many architects, uh, our projects, uh, project managers are, are very now work for the Serpentine, within the Serpentine team. So it was a different kind of conversation we had with them. But he would say to me things like, Julia, you know, if we just put up a few columns here, we would save huge amounts of money. And I know it would interrupt the space, but don't you think it would be a good idea? And I would say, no, Eric, I don't think so, because Zaha would really hate it, and I'm not going to be there when she sees the column. And that, that whole process of working to realize something the first time that we really did it in earnest began. Well, things came round to the happy day when uh, the gala dinner would, was going to take place, which was great, you know, great feeling of celebration, a great feeling of a job well done, with one exception, which was the rain and the weather was absolutely appalling. Now, this was, and I think this might be time for the one and only slide, um, <laughs> which is, uh, this is what it looked like. And um, the budget, which might sound a lot to all of you, uh, was £100,000. Now, it is, uh, I can assure you, peanuts if you're starting from scratch. And in addition to the structure itself, um, Zaha also designed all the tables that were a symphony, like um, keys of a piano, starting uh, from white and gradating through grey down to black. This is a very small amount of money. Um, however... Um, you can see here that there are really no sides to this structure. So rain is not the thing that you want on the day of this great event. It is seriously the thing you don't want. Because something that I'm very well aware of, and all of you who have ever visited the Serpentine, I hope every single person in this room has, the ground slopes on our lawn. So what it means is that when the rain falls, it has a marvelous sort of stream effect. And if there's a lot of rain, there is a wide kind of river effect. And so what we had was a river that ran from the top of the lawn with enthusiasm to the bottom. Now, obviously, you can't give a gala dinner uh, with people sitting in a pool of water. This doesn't work. So I rang our chairman, the very distinguished Peter Palumbo, who's chairman of the Pritzker Prize, and said, look, we've got three options. We cancel it, we move everybody inside, uh, or we tough it out. We agreed that cancelling it wasn't an option. Uh, we agreed that moving everybody inside wasn't an option because it meant they were all in different rooms. So we agreed to tough it out. And uh, to our great um, good luck, the uh, rain stopped. And one guest who still reminds me of this fact, who was wearing a couture outfit, white trousers, um, said that she couldn't understand why she had a watermark on the bottom of her trousers. And since she had given uh, um, all her clothes to the V&A because they were so distinguished and part of a collection, uh, the V&A has in its collection these wonderful trousers that have a watermark as a result of the water on the Serpentine Gallery lawn in Zaha Hadid's pavilion. Um, all of that was absolutely fine. But the question is, if you are a, if you are a, a tenant of the Royal Parks, uh, of which I think there are very few of us around, um, I can tell you authentically that they are wonderful landlords in every way, but demanding. And they see their lawn, they see every single blade of grass as something to be treasured, to nurtured, enjoyed, and un remain untouched. So the fact that we had, in a very short space of time, I think it was a week, built this structure for one night was, as far as they were concerned, something which was almost impossible. I mean, impossible in terms of, of hurting the blades of grass. We had many, many discussions about it. But as far as they were concerned, after that one night, the thing, the pavilion, the structure had to come down. And um, the sooner the better. Now, as it happened, Chris Smith, who is the legendary Chris Smith, the Secretary of State for Culture, Media, and Sport, came to our gala dinner and was seated opposite me. And I knew that under his remit, the Royal Parks were one of his portfolio. And I asked him whether he would let the, the pavilion stay on the lawn, and he agreed that it could. So what we did was we, um, we, uh, we organized, we very quickly put into uh, the pavilion a, a restaurant. Well, I mean, that's a bit grand, I must tell you. It was a cafe. It was a kind of like an open fire almost. Um, but it was enough to actually start and to launch what then became the pavilion series. And that series um, is now in its 12th year. It is the only scheme of its kind worldwide. And it was born, as I say, out of necessity. 
and it was necessity which was the mother of invention. In the time that uh, we worked um, after the Zaha experience, uh, she remains a trustee, and in 2007, I think it was, when um, the Olafur Elias and, and Kertel Torsen um, structure was late because of the most astonishing increase in, in steel prices, she stepped in again to do a beautiful uh, temporary installation called Lila's, in which the, the, the summer party, no longer a gala dinner now, was a summer party, in which the summer party was held. But in that, in the intervening years, we worked, we, we orchestrated the scheme so that um, we would only work with architects who at the time of their uh, invitation had not completed a building in England. It started off as the UK and that was a little too rigorous, so we brought it back to England. And the reason for that is because we wanted to display uh, an exhibition of the architects' work who we invited. We didn't want them to be English because in a way, if you're English, you should build in this country. If you don't, then the chances are, if you're good, you will build in this country. But what is remarkable and remains remarkable is that some of the greatest architects of all time do not have a building, a permanent building in this country at the time of our invitation. I suppose if I have to mention one above all others, it would be the great modernist Oscar Niemeyer, the architect of Brasilia who, uh, when he designed the pavilion for us, not, all, not only was it one of the greatest pleasures of my life to go backwards and forwards to Brazil, it was the Brazilian summer of all summers. And it lasted, all the pavilions last on our lawn for three months, uh, which is a lot, uh, the period of one of our longer running exhibitions. In the pavilions now, of course, we have our marathons, which is this annual discursive event over two years. This year, um, the designers and architects of the pavilion were Herzog de Murren and Ai Weiwei in recognition of the bird's nest in Beijing, which of course they designed also, and this play with the Olympics and what happened in China and of course what happened here. And the marathon was, uh, the, the, I should say the pavilion was dedicated to me memory. And um, I edited most severely the slides, so unfortunately you can't uh, see um, some of the pavilions that have been um, that have been realized. However, I can see so helpfully, and this sounds awful because it sounds as though it's a sales pitch, um, and you know what I think it's just about to be. This is our most beautiful book, which is a, um, a compilation of all of our pavilions which are being sold downstairs. But the reason I mention it is because in here are some of the examples that you don't see up there. Um, the, the pavilion this year was devoted to the subject of memory. And um, it was a memory of all the 12 pavilions. It was a most wonderful and extraordinary conceit of the designers and Weiwei, the artist, who'd worked together on the bird's nest. And they took as their, ooh, two minutes. They took as their starting point um, the pavilions over the past 12 years. This, in a way, is what encapsulates this incredible project, an incredible project that I have the great privilege to work on. And it is, of course, a project which is ongoing. I hope many of you visited the Serpentine. And if you don't, may I be a reminder of you to come very soon indeed. So thank you very much. Thank you.